Hello folks, this is Mark by Mark A. Foster PhD. I'm sorry to uh, interrupt what I had uh, planned to talk about today. I've just been watching, maybe fixating on the situation in the Near East, which used to be called the Middle East. Near East is a more geographically accurate description for what that's worth. Not much right now. And um, seeing all the casualties, all the fatalities from both the Israeli and the Palestinian sides. Honestly, I don't want to see anybody get killed anymore. I want this conflict to end. I want Palestine to be freed to become its own independent country to decide its own terms not to rely upon the terms of Israel for too long Israel has been determining what would happen to Palestine Israel has defeated the Palestinians in their attempts to establish an independent state. Other countries, especially the United States, have prevented sanctions from being imposed upon Israel because of its veto power in the United Nations Security Council. Only a few nations were granted that power. The United States was among them. That was really one of the conditions for the UN being established. As you probably know, there was a previous attempt after World War I to establish a world um, body. The League of Nations, it collapsed largely because the United States refused to join. So, why have a UN? What is the purpose of the UN? When these tragedies are happening right now in the Near East, perpetrated by King Bibi Benjamin Netanyahu, why? Why do we have that body? I have visited the United Nations building many times. I'm a native New Yorker. I was born in Manhattan. It's a beautiful building. You walk in, go a little bit to the right, and there is the UN chapel. I have gone in to that chapel and prayed for peace and yet peace is nowhere to be found so why have it what's the point now there are certainly some bodies which are under the jurisdiction of the United Nations like UNICEF which do good all around the world but the United Nations, which is basically defined by the United Nations Security Council, is worthless. It's literally doing nothing. The problems continue. Israel seems to have immunity to any kind of reaction. The BDS movement which stands for boycott, divest, boycott, divestment, and security, has been defeated. Who talks about BDS anymore? Hardly anyone. It was crushed. Israel, especially now under the control of the unindicted war criminal, Bibi Netanyahu appears to feel 
that he is free to do whatever he wants. And that's exactly what he's doing. There are no restraints anymore being placed on that country. Brings me tremendous sadness. I remember I was one time invited as a sociologist of religion to attend a diner back when I lived in Kansas. It was in Overland Park right off of I-35, Interstate 35. And um, I was tricked by the Unification Church, the organization formerly run by the Reverend Sun Myung Moon, now run by his wife, although there are now three uh, split off, splinter organizations as well. But the original body headed by Reverend Moon's wife, who is known by his followers as father, his wife known as mother, remains the largest organization. So at this meeting I was invited to, I was not told what the purpose of the meeting was that was kept, kept in the dark from me. In retrospect, I never should have agreed to go. Never. Never. But I did. The meeting was in a restaurant. Um, I did not pay for the food. It was being paid for by uh, that local chapter of the Unification Church. There was a guest there from uh, Japan. I forget his name but his name is not important. And even if I remembered it, I wouldn't mention it. It's, it's irrelevant and I have no desire to defame him as an individual. What he was doing, this, I don't know what position he had or has, was traveling around trying to marry off women to men that the church had contact with. Didn't matter whether the men were members or not members of the Unification Church. Of course, I am not a member of it. Not only, only am I not a member, I dislike the Unification Church. Uh, it stands for all the neoconservative, uh, I would argue even fascist values that I despise. I've always hated the Unification Church. I remember back during the impeachment hearings for Richard Nixon when it looked like Richard Nixon was going to be impeached. Members of the Unification Church from New York, where I was living at the time, drove down to Washington to picket, to picket, Washington, the White House, and the Congressional Building, trying to get those hearings to stop, supporting Richard Nixon. It was then and there that I realized that the Unification Church was my enemy. So what happened at that restaurant? Again, this Japanese man, accompanied by a young Japanese woman, were there to try to get me hooked up with her. I was not told this in advance. It was a total and complete surprise to me when I got there. I realized afterwards you know, you always think of things you should have said afterwards. Not when you really should have said them. I realized afterwards that this man 
was in reality functioning as a pimp. He was traveling around the world pimping these women. These women were his hookers. He was trying to get them married off to men. So, when this uh, Japanese man approached me, he said, well, wouldn't this be a wonderful marriage? A Japanese woman married to a Zionist. I will never forget that. Never. What I said to him was, what makes you think that I am a Zionist? He gave a kind of nervous laugh, then looked away. They tried to convince me, ultimately successfully, uh, to at least go to a shopping mall, the Oak Park Mall, with this Japanese woman. What I should have said what I should have said are two things. Okay, I will go. But I want you first, the Japanese man, to acknowledge two things to me. First, that you are a pimp. Well, of course he wouldn't do that. And second, what makes you think that I am a Zionist? In fact, I am an anti-Zionist. I am pro-Palestinian. So why would you say that? Unfortunately, that only occurred to me after the entire event was over and after I was gone. So, um, but interestingly, I used to hear from the local chapter of the Unification Church in Kansas City on a regular basis I never heard from them again. Now, what does this have to do with Marxism or Maoism, third worldism? What it does, to me at the very least, is it shows the utter dirt and corruption into which much, much of the first world has fallen. Who would do something like that? Who would act like a pimp, a religious leader, and turn these women into prostitutes? Who would make the assumption, without knowing me, that I was a Zionist, whereas in fact I am precisely the opposite? Why in the world would he say those kinds of things to me? Why? Well, because he was assuming, perhaps rightly to some extent, that most Americans would agree with him. And there, and there, my friends, is the corruption. So that was not what I planned to talk about today. This is entirely extemporaneous. I will get to the subject I plan to talk about in my next video, I promise you. It is the subject of localism, which is a very important topic, especially from a Marxist or Maoist third worldist perspective. But as I was sitting down, this thought occurred to me as I was thinking about the events now taking place in Palestine and Israel. And I felt that it would be, um, I, don't, I don't know what the right word would be. I felt that it would be inappropriate or at least inopportune for me not to mention that subject now. So I did. Make of it what you like. This is Mark by Mark A. Foster, Ph.D. Have a pleasant day and an even better day tomorrow.